called him to him. Who is this? He's not even from the companions. He's from the following generation. Do you see how the Prophet Wasallam and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is melting any conflicts that could happen between the generations? The generations love each other and he's making the companions generation love the generation that will follow them and look up to them like that. I fear, wallahi I fear in our Arab countries after all the events that have happened, conflicts happen between the generations. The Prophet is melting these conflicts. He stands upright, held, head held up high, his right over his left reciting the Qur'an and crying in humbleness. Over his shoulders is a wool garment. He's poor, he isn't wearing anything exquisite. Under his arm, you see the Prophet even is going to give more description of him. Under his left arm is a mark, a white mark, left from a disease he had and it's the size of a coin. Oh my God, O oh Prophet of Allah, you are giving very precise details. And then the Prophet continued, unknown among the people of the earth, well known to the inhabitants of the heavens. Subhanallah. The angels know him very well, and the prophets in the seven heavens know him very well, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows him very well, yet unknown among the people of the earth, well known to the inhabitants of the heavens. And the Prophet continues describing him. Then he goes on saying, he has a mother. This is the first time I see someone who will be known or described by having a mother. He has a mother whom he honors. What is this? Have you ever seen anybody described by having a mother whom he honors? You want to know him? Know him from his mother whom he honors. That's how he's marked. If he said, Oh Allah, his supplication is answered. Realize that this came right after he has a mother that he honors greatly. And the Prophet Muhammad says, really strong. What did he say? He said something that's really strong. What did he say? The believers are bought on the day of judgment and are told to enter heaven. So a waste comes. So he's told, stop, you don't enter heaven. But why? Intercede to whom you wish from the believers. So he stands forever, for a very long period of time. And he intercedes for as many people as the tribes of Mudr and Rabi'ah. There are two Arab tribes, and what's their population? 200,000. Subhanallah, Uwais al Qarni will intercede for 200,000. A marcher who is a marcher gets to intercede for 70 of his family members. And Uwais intercedes for as many people as Mudr and Rabia. 200,000. Who is this man? Uwais al Qarni, who is he? Then the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, looked to Omar and Ali and said, O oh, Omar, O oh, Ali, if both of you meet Uwais al-Qarni, ask him to pray for you and ask for forgiveness for you. فَاسْأَلُوا أَنْ يَدْعُوا لَكُمَ وَأَنْ يَسْتَغْفِرَ لَكُمْ Oh my God, what is this guys? We are standing in front of a character, Omar and Ali, the ones who have been promised heaven. If they met Uwais al-Qarni after the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's death to ask him to make supplication for them? And what an advice to Omar and Ali from the Prophet. Do you see how this character must be like? Can you imagine what is this? What is this man doing, Uwais al-Qarni, that he would make dua for Omar and Ali? So what's his story? Let's start the story from the very beginning, when he was a child. When he was a child, his father passed away, an orphan, poor, a shepherd. He doesn't indulge in life forcefully. It's not his will. He can't. He's already poor. He can barely find food. His mother's an old woman. He's not happy. Don't ever think that people just turn out to be great. He's not happy with his situation. Why am I poor? There was no Islam yet. Why am I living like this? Why am I an orphan? And he would look up to the sky. Why? Why do I have to carry the burden of caring for my mother? And I have no family. He continued to be like this until he had an accident or an accident happened to him. What's this accident or coincidence? His mother lost her eyesight. So now he had to start even taking more care of her and move her around everywhere. So more pain was added to his pain. Now I have to even move her around. Isn't it enough that I have to take care of her? Till this minute, this is how he sees matters. Until something very strange happened. What happened? One day, he was lighting a candle and taking his mother's hand to move her around. And then suddenly the, cand the candle light went out. It became pitch dark. So he and his mother became equal in blindness. So the one who has eyesight couldn't see. But she, the one who was blind, knew her way around better than him because she was trained to move on how to move around without, you know, around the house without seeing. So she was the one who took his arm and moved him around. So he got confused. 
We are equal in blindness, and me the one with eyesight, I am weaker than her. What is the scale of light and darkness? He started thinking, and he was seventeen years old. What's light and what's darkness? From his luck and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's destiny is that the following day, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa had sent someone to Yemen to teach people Islam, who happens to be who? Ali ibn Abi Talib. So Ali ibn Abi Talib is talking to the people of Yemen on the road as he meets them about Islam. So who does he meet? He meets Awais al qarni But they didn't know each, each other and they never introduced themselves to each other. So he didn't know that he was Awais and Awais didn't know that this was Ali. So Awais told him, recite to me from the Qur'an that your Prophet recites. So Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, recited Surah An-Nur, the light, until he reached the verse 40. And he to whom Allah has not granted light, for him there is no light. Subhanallah. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ نُورًا فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ نور. This verse hooked up with him to what happened in the previous day with his mother. Light is from God. So he asked Ali, and what does your Prophet say? Tell me something from what your Prophet says or calls to. The hadith, so what does he say? Ali is bright. He saw that he's wearing worn out garments and poverty showed on him. So what hadith would you tell him, Ali? You know, some people aren't just bright. They'll just say any hadith. But when Ali saw how he was, he said the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ told us. And he told him a hadith that would touch him personally, that would touch Uwais personally. What did he say? He said, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ says, what have I to do with this world? And what have I this and what has this world to do with me? Mali wa mali dunya wa mali dunya wa mali. I am to this world as a man who walked on a very hot day and found a tree. So he sat under its shade for an hour, then he walked away and left it and went. That's what this world is. An hour. Uwais listened and said, Ashadu anna la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. I bear witness that there is no God except Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. He was 17 years old. So this happened three years before the Prophet, peace be upon him, death. And here he stood in front of his first question or decision to make. Come on, immigrate. I want to immigrate to the Prophet Muhammad. But, but my mother. But the Prophet Muhammad is companionship. But how can I leave my mother? Do you remember? He has a mother that he honors greatly. If you were in a wife's shoes, would you go to the Prophet or would you stay with your mother? I'll just go to Medina, just hug the Prophet, just even see him or my, you know, how about my mother? He chose my mother. No, I can't leave. I can't leave my mother. Who is going to take care of her? Leave her with someone from your tribe to take care of her just until you go see the Prophet and come back. No, 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 I couldn't. His priorities are set right. Has anyone ever asked themselves this question? If you were really in his shoes, what would you choose? I know, of course, you'd say, I'd go. That's what you'd say if you got the chance to go for a visit now when he's dead, to go to the Medina. You'd say, of course I'll go. My mother's going to be fine. But that wasn't his choice. And remember, he who gives up something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards him. Rewards him with what's even better than it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must reward him, and his reward will be an extraordinary reward. No, I won't leave my mother. And note, the Prophet, peace be upon him, died and he didn't get to see him. And that's why he became a follower. Although he embraced Islam three years before his death, but who do I leave my mother to? I can't leave my mother. You know what? Uwais's first secret is that he sacrificed everything, but not his mother. And he's going to stay by her side until he's 33 years old. From 17 to 33 years old, just for his mother. Don't ever think the word befriend your parents or honor them means that you don't just raise your voice or that you don't argue with them. It has a much bigger meaning to it. Companionship is suhbah. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Luqman, but accompany them in this world with appropriate kindness. وَصَحِبُهُمَ فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفَ O oh, Prophet of Allah, who is the most worthy to give good companionship or friendship? Look, not once was the parents mentioned in the Qur'an unless the word suhbah or accompanying or befriending came with it. That's why the Prophet responded, Your mother. O oh, Prophet of Allah, I'm asking you who is worthy of my friendship, like my friend to hang out with. I'm talking about friends. Okay, my mother. And then who? Your mother. And then who? Your mother. That's why the Prophet said it three times. And then who? Your father. Befriend your mother and your father. I believe we all misinterpreted the, misinterpret the meaning of honoring our parents. We understand honoring them. We don't raise our voice. Watch how we're talking. No. Honoring is befriending them. Good companionship. Suhbah. Suhbah salihah. 
A man came to Hassan al-Basri and told him, I took permission from my mother, who has no one but me to take, to take care of, of her, to come and perform pilgrimage. What do you think of my pilgrimage? Hassan al-Basri replied, By Allah, sitting once with her at her table and eating with her her food that she cooked is better and more preferable to my heart than you coming here to perform pilgrimage or hajj. Another man from the followers says, One night in Ramadan, my mother was ill, so I stayed by her side, pressing with my hands on where the pain was, while my brother went to the night prayers. By Allah, sitting by her side and pressing on where her pain was is more beloved to my heart than praying all night for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how well this generation understood the meaning of honoring parents. Birril walidain. Companionship, that's the first secret. Don't tell me I don't speak rudely to them, so I do honor them. Are you friends with them? Do you go out with them? Do you sit and have dinner or suhoor with them? Do you put your money together with them so that you would, could live by, by them or next to them and ask about them day or night? Or was your family divided and you left them and everybody went their own way? So that's Uwaisa Qarnay's first secret. How about the second secret? The second secret is he didn't indulge in this life. Khafif min dunya This world doesn't mean anything to him. It doesn't matter. He's living. He's fine. Who cares about materialism? Let's see what happened. The Prophet, peace be upon him, died. And Uwais didn't get a chance to meet him. And Abu Bakr siddiq died as well. And now Umar ibn al-Khattab became the Muslim's caliph, Khalifat al-Mu'mineen. And can you imagine, every year during pilgrimage, Umar would go out among the pilgrims calling, Is there a man amongst you called Uwais al-Qarni? Afikum Uwais al -Qarni? But why are you doing this, O Umar? Didn't the Prophet ask you for this to be done? Didn't he tell him, when you see him, have him supplicate for you? Does Umar follow the words of the Prophet, peace be upon him, to this extent every year? The first year, is Uwais al Qarni amongst you? Afikum Uwais al Qarni? The pilgrims would reply, O Prince of the Believers, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, we do not know who he is. Who is this Uwais he talks of? And he would ask specifically the pilgrims from Yemen. So he would say, Truthful, O you, Prophet of Allah, and known in this world, when known, well known in the heavens. Maghulun fil art, nobody knows who he is. Nobody knows him. Even the people of his own land, Yemen, don't know who he is. So Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, comes the following year during pilgrimage. And on the Mount of Harafah, he would ask the people to stand up. So they would stand up, asking, what's going on? No, Prince of Allah, why is he asking them to stand up? So he would reply, everyone sit except the people of Yemen. So everyone would sit except the people of Yemen. They would remain standing. And then he would tell the people of Yemen, everyone sit except those of you from the tribe of Murad. So everyone would sit, sit except those from the tribe of Murad. Then he would say, all sit except those from Qarn. So everyone would sit except in, the nobody would left until one year, one man remained standing. So he said, are you from Qarn? A Qarniyun ant? He replied, yes, I am. He said, do you know Uwaisa Qarnay? He said, yes, that's my nephew. But what would you, O Caliph, have to do with Uwaisa Qarnay? He's a poor young man that no one really pays attention to. So Umar ibn al-Khattab wept and said, he whom you speak of will come on the day of judgment and intercede for as many people as the people of the tribes of Rabi'ah and Mudar. People will be sent to heaven and he will be stopped to intercede for 200,000 people. Be careful guys, don't you ever belittle a poor person. Don't you ever oppress a poor person. You never know what he might be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be careful rich people. But did you see Umar, may Allah be pleased with him? Did you see how he was keen to follow what the Prophet asked him to do? Why? Because he told him, have him supplicate for you, O Umar. I beg you, just pick one hadith from the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sayings and stick to it. Live by it. Copy Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. Just take one hadith, a hadith about morals. A Muslim is the one that people are safe from his tongue and hands and follow it. Umar ibn al-Khattab kept looking for a wife for 10 years just because the Prophet asked him to do that. 10 years. Take this idea and just live by one hadith, at least one. So now comes the last year for Umar before he dies. What had happened? Uwais al Karnay's mother had passed away. But back again, when Umar had met um, Uwais's uncle years ago, he asked him if Uwais was with him, and he replied, no. So Umar asked him, is his mother alive? He said, yes. Umar replied, truthful are you, O Prophet of Allah. And then he looked to Ali ibn Abi Talbi and said, he wouldn't leave her and come. He wouldn't leave her. He wouldn't. He's very honorable to his mother. He wouldn't do that. When the Prophet described him to us, he said, he is righteous to his mother. Do you ever, did you ever see someone described by that? You want to know him? Look for what, what his description is, and that would be that person. He's honorable, or he's righteous to his mother. My dear youth, girls and boys, how are you doing with your parents? I wonder. 
Is your mother pleased with you? Can you, you know what? You can fast all you want. But if she's upset with you, then you're very far away. Don't even try. Be righteous to her and then make dua or supplicate and see. Do you remember what the Prophet said? He has a mother whom he is righteous to. If he prayed to Allah, he would accept his dua and please him. Righteousness, my brothers and sisters, to your parents. Learn righteousness to your parents from Awais al Qarni. So again, every year he would look for him until, as we said, the last year before Omar's death. He had to meet him. And mind you, Uwais still now had no idea that the Prophet spoke about him. Right, where would he know from? There was no one who was going to tell him he, except Omar, you know what I'm saying? Till now he doesn't know what his status is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows that he's unknown on the earth, but he doesn't know that he's well known among the heavens. The last year for Omar, Uwais's mother had passed away. And how old is Uwais now? 33 years old. And where did he go? To perform pilgrimage, Hajj. So on one Mount Arafah, Omar calls out, O people of Yemen, is Uwais al-Qarni amongst you? So a man stood up and said, O Caliph, he's that poor shepherd that's guarding the flock of sheep over there. Omar, may Allah be pleased with him, grabbed Ali ibn Abi Talib, O Halayi, we found him, we found him. And he ran to him, Are you Uwais al-Qarni? Anta Uwais al-Qarni? He replied, Yes. He said, Show me your shoulder. So he revealed his shoulder, and Omar found a white mark the size of a coin or a dirham. He said, Oh, Hali, it's him. He continued, Do you have a mother? Uwais replied, She died, and that's why I came. Omar said, Truthful are you, O Prophet of Allah. He wouldn't have left her and come, as, as, unless she had passed away. Wallahi, I say these words, and I feel ashamed for my mother. Who has reached, reached this level of righteousness with his parents? Even Omar knew for certain he wouldn't come unless she died. After Omar asked these questions, Uwais asked, Who are you? He doesn't know them. Omar replied, I am Omar ibn al-Khattab, the Caliph of the Muslims. And this is Ali ibn Abi Talib, who came along with the message to the people of Yemen. Uwais cried, I remember him. And then he continued, but how do you know me? So Omar started telling him what the Prophet, peace be upon him, had told him. Can you imagine? He's hearing these words for the first time. Oh Uwais, you were unknown on earth, well known in the heavens. Jibreel mentioned you to the Prophet, peace be upon him. Can you imagine hearing this word, these words? And he told us that you're righteous to your mother. And he told us about the mark on your arm. And he told us that you're wearing wool out of poverty. And he told us on the Day of Judgment you will intercede for 200,000 people. If you were in Uwais's shoes, what would, you have, what would happen to you hearing these words? Can you imagine? Would you weep? Can you imagine me? He knew me. The Prophet knew me. Yes, he knew you, Uwais. He knew you by name, and Jibril knows you, and the angels know you. You are very dear, Uwais, and you didn't know. Me, the poor person. Yes. And Omar goes, Pray for me, Uwais. Idaliya, Uwais. What is this humbleness, Omar? Khalifat al Mu'minin. What is this? Do you need Uwais to pray for you? Yes, the Prophet told me to have him supplicate for me. Wallahi, we don't understand this life right. And the way we weigh things needs to be adjusted a lot. Money being famous, appearance and wealth. I'm calling you to, I'm not calling you to poverty, but it's, you know, it's not a call to indulge in this life. It's a call to just be light and a call to be humble. What are these morals, Muhammad? Pray for me, Uwais. And Uwais replies, and can one like me pray for one like you, O Prince of the Believers, Ya Amir al Mu'minin? He replied, O oh, Uwais, the Prophet orders this, that if we meet you to ask you to supplicate for us and repent, ask for repentance for us. So Uwais raises his hand and prays, O oh, Allah, forgive Omar ibn, ibn al-Khattab. O oh, Allah, forgive Ali ibn Abi Talib. Did you see what the Prophet did here? Did you see how he weaved the generations into each other? Have you ever heard of a generation with great ideas that had a following generation that didn't come and collide with it and clash with it? With, with it? See in any generation, communism, any generation, except this generation. It loves the generation that came before it. Because the Prophet, peace be upon him, united them. There are no conflicts between the generations here. Wish our countries, we wish that our countries could be like that. No conflicts between the generations. I wish that between the parents and their children, that there would be no conflicts. Pray for me, Uwais. Ya Allah, forgive Omar. Ya Allah, forgive Ali. So Omar says, and look, here comes Uwais's other secret. He didn't indulge in life. And the first was righteousness to his mother. Let's see the second one. Omar said, O oh, Uwais, from today onwards, you are my companion in this life and in the hereafter. You're going to be with me always. You're going to live with me in Medina. 
He replied, No, O Prince of Believers, you are known to the people of earth, and I want to remain in the shadows. Let me be where I am. Can you imagine Omar ibn al-Khattab offering you to come to live with him or to be his companion, and you say, uh, No, thank you? This is a chance always. It's, if you want this dunya, this is life. Take it. How famous can you get? The whole world will be talking about you. A young man, 33, a companion of Omar. And most important, you have what the Prophet said about you. Let me go, O Prince of the Believers. Let me be. Let, be, let me be as light as I am. Let me go. I don't want this life. Let me read the dunya. So he said, but where will you have to? Back to Yemen? He replied, my mother has passed away. And you have scandalized me among my people. You've made me become famous among my people. Now everybody knows what the Prophet said about me. I will go to Kufa. He said then, let me write to the leader of Kufa to welcome you. He said, O oh, Prince of the Believers, let me be among those unknown. Let me be no more than a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have a friend and every time he meets me, he tells me, write my name or save my name on the cell phone as a servant of Allah's servants. Habdu min ibadillah. And you remember me. And that's how I saved his name. And now we have a great companionship. And every time he calls me, I remember him by a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's servants. So Uwais goes back and saying, Let me be, O Omar. Let me be. Let me be simple. No one knowing me. So he said, Then wait. I'll go back in Mecca and get you money to aid you in your livelihood. That's another great opportunity. Take money, Uwais. He said, No. No, O Prince of the Believers. لا يا أمير المؤمنين. We can never meet. You were from here. And I am from there. Ya Amir al Mu'minina, la mawad bainana. Ana minha huna. Wa anta minha huna. Subhanallah. You were saying this, Uwais? To who? O Prince of the Believers, why do you want to give me money? If you are giving me money for clothing, my clothing is from wool. And it isn't worn out yet. See? Oh my God. And look how we dress. I wonder how many outfits do we have in our closets. And he's telling him, I still have a cloth on me that has a lot of life in it. And when it's worn out, I'll get another piece of wool. And my soles or shoes aren't worn out yet. And when they do, I'll get another pair. And I have four dirhams, like four dollars, that I haven't spent yet. And I milk my goat and drink from that. O oh, Prince of Believers, what have I to do with your wealth? I can't be like a waste. And you're not expected to be like wise guys. I mean, this guy is just unbelievable. But the least we can do is at least to lighten up a little bit from this world. Just at least even during Ramadan. What's the lesson learned here? What do you want from us? Why are you telling us this story? Let's try not to indulge in this world, at least in Ramadan. I'm not after this life. It's not my main concern. Let's walk light on this earth. No dunya in our hearts. This is a wise. You don't have to be like him. You can remain where you are. I'm not asking you to change your whole life. But try not to have this world filling your heart. Remove it a bit from your heart. It's Ramadan and you're fasting. Keep light. Get it out of your heart a bit. I don't want you to say, Oh world, let me be and be simple. I don't want fame. I want, I'm sorry. I don't want like the world just to be filling me. I, I don't want fame. Let me worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me be. Let me go. That's what Uwais said. When Uwais said that, Omar replied, Remain with me, Uwais. Ibqa maya, Uwais. You are from here. Let, like, be beside me. Omar kept saying that to Uwais, but Uwais said, You are from here, and I am from there. Omar wept when he saw this temperance, Zuhd. And he said, I wish the mother of Omar never gave birth to Omar. I wish her never existed. Uwais replied, No, O Prince of the Believers. What I am in, this is a very important part here, guys, listen. What I am in is good for me. And what you are in is good for you and for all the Muslims. This sentence is golden. Do you see the priorities? No, Omar. If you imitated me, the Muslims would collapse. You have to be famous. And I can't be like you. Each one remains in his positions. But we both can remove love for dunya or life from our hearts. While you remain rich and famous, and while I remain as I am is in my shadows. What I am in is good for me. And what you are in from being famous and ruling the lands and leading the Muslims is good for you and for the Muslims. 
Do you understand now why the Prophet chose Umar specifically and told him, when you meet him, have him pray for you? Why Umar ibn Khattab specifically? Because they are total opposites. Extreme fame, Umar. Totally unknown, Awais. Extreme power, Umar. Extreme poverty, Awais. Umar has the wealth of the lands. He even had the treasure of Chosros, Qasra. Awais owns nothing. Two extremes, opposites, but two summits, two peaks, Qammatayn. There are two peaks, both of them in their own way. But the two are gathered by one thing. This world doesn't control me, and I have no need for it. Umar has it in his hands, and Uwais doesn't, but neither one of them care about it. Subhanallah. That's why the Prophet, peace be upon him, told to Umar specifically, you have to meet him, so that we can see the example of the two peaks, extreme opposites, each one in the total opposite direction from the other, and what gathers them? I don't care for this dunya. I don't care about this life. And as if the Prophet, peace be upon him, is trying to tell you, don't change your position. If you're rich, and if you, and be. And if you're poor, be. No one is saying, I'm going to be like Uwais. But all this dunya doesn't matter with me. All I have to say is this, this dunya doesn't matter. It's not a big thing to me. It's not a big thing. Do you see the idea here or the concept? Do you see why Uwais and Umar, these two peaks are standing in front of one another? This is Uwais' story. And he leaves for Al-Kufa. And Umar keeps trying to follow his news. And every time someone would come from Al-Kufa, he would ask, How is Uwais? They reply, We don't know who he is. Uwais joined the Muslim army and participated in the conquering of Azerbaijan. Imagine where, and he died there. He died two years after Umar ibn al-Khattab's death. He died around 35 or 36 years old. He died a young man. But at the end of the story, try to imagine Uwais on the Day of Judgment. Imagine the Prophet, peace be upon him, hugging him. Imagine when he meets Umar the Beloved and Ali. Imagine the kind of clothing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bestow him with. Imagine him standing on the Day of Judgment interceding for the people. I wonder, will he intercede for you? I wonder, will he remember me that I spoke to you about him and introduced you to him? Imagine his mother and he's telling her, you are the reason for what I'm in now. I wonder, are we righteous or mothers? I wonder, is our hearts light not filled with dunya? I wonder on the day of judgment, are we going to be among the 200,000 who will pass? What's this dunya? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment says, O oh son of Adam, I made for you a lineage, and you made for yourself a lineage. I told you the best of you are the most righteous. And you said so and so, the son of so and so, the son of so and so. Today, I put your lineage down and raise mine. Subhanak ya Rabbi. Where are the righteous? Aynan muttaqeen. That was Uwais's story. But what are the lessons learned from it? I beg you, be righteous to your mother. Run to her tonight. Befriend her. The second thing, lighten up from this dunya. Please, try even one day. What's this dunya? Don't be just indulge in everything that has to do with this life. The third thing, set your priorities. Don't change your place or your position. But set your priorities straight. Don't let the dunya control you. You control it. Let, let it be in your hand. Don't let it fill your heart. The fourth thing, be humble like Umar ibn al-Khattab. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us from these words. words. And inshallah, ya Rabb, I'll see you tomorrow with a new episode and a new followed, follower and new ideas. May Allah protect you. And I beg you be righteous to your mom tonight. It's not hard. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's peace and blessings be upon you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi.